performing in Los Angeles next week, and she recently performed in the Women in Comedy Festival. Please welcome Danielle Soto. Thank you. Wow, thank you all so much. I'm so excited to be here. Are you guys having a good time? Are you having fun? Are you having a good time? I'm having a blast. I'm so excited to be here. I can't even tell you. I'm so excited. What do you think of the outfit? Love it's okay? It. You love it? You lo I'm so appreciative of that. Thank you. I wasn't sure what to wear. I didn't know what to wear tonight because actually the last stand-up show I did was a naked show. <laughs> yes, this is true. I did stand-up totally naked. And a lot of people, when they find that out, they go, wow, that must have felt really different, huh? I go, oh, you have no idea. It feels so different being up on stage, totally naked, under the lights, without any rap music playing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hannah Perlmutter from Arlington Public News. Tonight I'm with Danielle Soto, who is a local Boston stand-up comedian. Danielle, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. What made you start comedy in the first place? The reason I got into comedy to begin with was because I was doing sketch in college, writing sketch comedy, performing in that group was my whole life in college. I loved it. And so when I got out of college, I was definitely like, I need to continue that. I want to write with a group. But I didn't know anyone in Boston who I could do comedy with, and I couldn't afford to take a class at one of the comedy schools so I was like okay I want to write I want to perform and I'm alone so stand-up comedy was like the natural next step and I had done a little bit of it at UMass and it went well but then when I got to Boston I was like okay this is my main focus now and this is what I want to concentrate on I was looking for work for a long time I was looking on Craigslist for a job and my, I was looking with a friend she said uh, I found an ad for you it's, it's for a topless maid you should do that I said, dude, I'm not going to clean. <laughs> so how do you break into that sort of industry? Did you just start by doing open mics and stuff like that? That's exactly right, yes. Uh, you start at one open mic, and then hopefully the folks there uh, tip you off and tell you which other open mics you can go to and give you suggestions. And so I started, actually, now that I think of it, I was working at MIT as a temp and one of the men who worked across the hall from me was doing stand-up and he had an open mic in Dorchester on Sundays at the Banshee, which no longer exists. But <laughs> he said, why don't you come down and just try, just give it a shot. You know, you've been interested in doing it, just try. I says, okay. So I went out there and I did it and I liked it and they told me, why don't you go to Thursday nights at the Howard Johnson's? So I said, okay. So I went to Thursday night at the Howard Johnson's. And then from there they said, how about Mondays in Somerville. I said, okay, and I just went from open mic to open mic to open mic. Pretty soon I had, you know, my five minutes that I was ready to go on stage with. During the day I work in a hospital, and one of the nurses I work with asked me if I have breast implants. I said, no, but I'm flattered you think I'm that good with my savings. <laughs> What's your process like when you're writing these sort of jokes? I imagine it doesn't, it's not so easy all the time. Well, I'm inspired a lot because I have very funny people in my life and so it just kind of happens naturally. I don't have, I don't sit down and write. I can't. How, how can I do that? <laughs> so it's just more like through conversation, funny things will come up or situational things and I take aspects of my life or experiences I've had and I just pull out the humor from it and I try to write on that. And sometimes things just pop out of my mouth and I'll go, oh, that's funny. Oh, I gotta write that down because I have a terrible memory. So every time I say anything, I'm like pulling out my notebook or I'll like text message it to myself. <laughs> so I save it for later and just keep developing it, I guess. You know, it starts with just that idea or like that one premise. I like wearing makeup. I like going to Sephora. It's really fun for me. I bought this lip gloss the other day that has snake venom in it. And then you start adding tags and you get a punchline and start just developing a joke from it. And the idea is you put it on your lips, it stings your lips, plumps them up and makes them look better. And sometimes it turns into a one-liner and sometimes it turns into like a huge chunk of material. 
So yeah. you just never know what you're going to come up with. But it's kind of a catch-22 because, yeah, your lips look better, but it's really hard to start a blowjob with this might sting a little. <laughs> what was strange to me was that with, I did improv in high school. And it came to me very naturally. I picked it up immediately. And it was like fun and funny, and I had a good time. Sketch writing, same. I started as a freshman. I would never written a sketch before. And I was very successful in it. And then I get to Boston, and I start doing stand-up. And I was terrible. And I was like, what is going on? Am I not funny anymore? Did I lose my talent? And then I realized it's just a different beast. It's just different. And you're so much more vulnerable because it's all you and you're not playing a character most of the time. I mean, I'm certainly not. I'm me up there. So they're really getting to know you. And if, if they don't laugh, it's because you didn't present it right. You didn't write it correctly. That's on you. Like you cannot blame the other people in the sketch. It's totally a hundred percent you. That's scary. It is sometimes scary. It takes a lot of almost like being delusional like oh I can do this this will be fun and then you go up and you're like that's not fun that wasn't fun at all but I'm gonna do it again and then you go up again and you're like this is awful why do I torture myself <laughs> there are nights before I go on I'm like why do I do this why do I do this to myself this is horrible this is so scary I'm terrified to get up on stage right now but then once I'm on there you have to tear the microphone away from me because I'm having so much fun and I love it. It's like my home away from home, being yeah. up on stage. You, you sort of have this air about you when you go up on stage. You kind of like settle into yourself and like you really get into your element. And I think you can really tell that when you get up there, you just know you have to bring it or like you might as well not even be up there. Thank you for <laughs> You're saying welcome, but that. But that's hard to do because some people get up there, they get nervous and they sort of fail themselves, I think. Well... I've gotten used to that. That did not come naturally right away. That's something that I worked on. And the way that I've sort of developed my stage presence is honestly by going and watching other comedians. Uh, I think that half of the credit you get in this class is observing and auditing the class. You have to watch. You have to go see. Not only do you have to see people at the Wilbur, like traveling, headlining, you know, the greatest comedians on the planet, you have to see the people starting out. Because what you'll learn from them is, like, what looks nervous on stage, what looks new, and what's not developed yet. You know, you can learn just as much from someone starting out as you can from someone who's been doing this for 30 years. Yeah, that's really interesting. So who is your favorite comedian right now? My all-time favorite comedian... This is a hard question because I have I know, a lot of them. <laughs> Uh, my all-time favorite comedian is Joan Rivers. I love Joan Rivers. I think that I would not have a career without Joan Rivers existing. I wouldn't know what a woman looked like on stage if not for Joan Rivers. Um, so many times you see comics will hold the microphone like Bill Burr or they'll stand like Louis C.K. And it's like, that's all well and good, but being a female... I don't want to look like a man on stage. I want to look like me, myself. And Joan Rivers up there, she just looks like queen of comedy. She yeah. is so influential to me. She's my, she's my idol. I love her. In terms of like local people, um, I'm a huge fan of Lenny Clark. He is one of my favorites. He is Foster so guy. funny. Yes. He performs a lot in Saugus at his club, which is Giggles, and he is so, I've learned so much from watching him. When you watch him, it's not like you're at a comedy show. It's like you're in his living room, and he's just talking the loudest, and it's just like you're his best friend. He makes the audience feel like they're among friends. It's incredible what he does. He just takes everyone, and he puts them on one team. It's really incredible, and it inspires me, so I love him. There's so many incredible people local. Um, I got to work with Ralphie May in oh, December, okay. which was incredible. He is so talented, and he is so nice and thoughtful and encouraging and supportive. I just love the guy. He was so good to me. And what was so crazy about that experience was 
I had watched a workshop that he had taught that was online. And this is before I ever met him or like was talking to him. And I watched it, it was two hours long, and I watched it like this, like <laughs> just attached. I was like taking it all in. And one of the things he taught was use the silence. If you have a joke that needs buildup or like emphasis, use the silence. So I have a joke where I do <clears throat> pause for a bit and I kind of look around kind of confused at the audience and I always get nervous in that moment but I remember what he said. I remember use it, you know, use it to your advantage. And when I performed with him, that was the joke that he commented on. Really? Totally coincidental. He was like, that joke really works. And it's awesome. so funny because like he didn't know it, but he helped me with it. Yeah, he had no idea. He had no he idea. Kind of and that he's like, you gotta expand on that. Keep going. Like keep keep working that joke. And I was like in my head, like, you helped me already. <laughs> <laughs> How did you team up with him? That's a great question. I was writing to him on Twitter, actually. I met him through Twitter. Twitter's oh an amazing tool. For comedians, definitely. To connect. Yeah. For, yeah, absolutely. I've met so many people through Twitter. It's weird. Um, I was going to his show. You know, I was a fan. I've loved him since high school. I used to watch him on, like, Celebrity Fit Club. <laughs> yes, I, I love that show. <laughs> so I was, like, I was always a fan of his. So when he was coming to Boston, I was like, i got to go see him. I've never seen him before. So I invited a friend and we went out and like I tweeted that I was going to see him and he he is in love with his fans. He's always tweeting at people back when they write to him. So he wrote back to me and I wrote back to him and he wrote back to me and then pretty soon he was like, because then following night I had a show so I tweeted about that. He goes, wait a minute, you're a comic? I go, yeah. He goes, you don't have to pay to see my shows. Don't pay, just write to me, I'll get you in. Like, you don't have to buy a ticket. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, don't ever do that again. <laughs> he was so sweet to me. And then he invited me to see him at Foxwoods. So I went, and I thought we were just going to, like, say hi, maybe have dinner if I'm lucky. And when I got there, he was like, how about you do some time? I was like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? Do you really want me to? He's like, yeah, why not? Can you do eight minutes? I was like, I guess so, if you want me to, if you really think I can. And he's like, yeah, he was cool. He was so cool. Because growing up, he had people like Bill Hicks and Sam Kinison helping him out. So I think he's just paying it forward. Like, yeah. they were cool to him, giving him opportunity. So he's just paying forward that favor. And I will totally do that for a young comic. What is some advice that you would give to other female comedians who are kind of looking to break out for the first time? My advice to any woman who's starting out in comedy is go for it. Try. Don't say you'll do it tomorrow. <clears throat> you don't have to write five minutes. You don't have to write two minutes. Go up with one, two jokes that you think is funny and just try it because you never ever know where you're going to land. When I started, I thought I was just looking for people to start a sketch group with, and now stand-up is what I'm after. It turned into a career. So my advice for a young female comic is write what you know, write what you <clears throat> think is funny. If it makes you laugh, then it's going to make somebody else laugh too, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> just go for it. Try it. Get out there. And if anyone has any questions or wants to reach me, you know, just Google me. I'm more than happy to answer anyone's questions out there. I really want to encourage people to try this because it, it's the love of my life. I want to share that with people. Awesome. And you have a Twitter. What is it? Danielle Soto 617. Great. And that's also, um, you can find me on Instagram. Is that the same thing? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Hannah Perlmutter for Arlington Public News. Thank you for watching.